is the Aquarius full moon. So we're going to talk about what a full moon is. We'll also talk about Aquarius energy. We're also going to talk about the sun season of Leo, another energy that we're in. Some other astrological insights as well. There are some interesting alignments coming up right now. This moon is aligning with Saturn. It's also squaring off with um, Uranus and also squaring off with both Rahu and Ketu in Vedic astrology. Uh, speaking of Vedic astrology, we're going to be touching base on that as well. So I'll be talking a little bit about astrology of this moon from the Eastern perspective of the world. I'm going to be doing a tarot reading and I'm going to do tarot readings, tarot card pulls for you tonight as well. Namaste, and welcome to the Follow Your Path podcast. I'm your host, Vina Lene Rachel. I'm a moon priestess, intuitive, emotional alchemist, and channeler of the divine, and I've been diving into the world of the spiritual and metaphysical for over a decade now to self-heal my own trauma, become more emotionally stable, and cultivate my manifestation magic. I am so excited to now be bringing these same tools and techniques to you on this channel. There are a variety of ways for us to work on our higher selves. We can use practices like yoga, meditation, and breath work. We can receive energy work, crystal healing, or pull to row and oracle cards. We can call in our angels, ancestors, spirit guides, spirit animals, or more. Or maybe we find more alignment with astrology and the moon. I'm going to hold space for it all here on this channel. As you navigate each episode, I hope you find the guidance and wisdom you need to find your own path of self-healing and magic. May you become confident and courageous enough to continue to follow the path that best serves you. Thank you so much for tuning into this channel and trusting me to be a part of your unique journey. It truly is an honor to do this work and be here. Let's dive into today's episode. But I just want to check the chat and make sure everything is good. I think we are good. I think we're good everywhere. Hello, Amy. Hello, Lisa. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Thanks. I knew you'd love this. I kind of thought about you the moment I got it done. I was like, oh, Lisa wears her hair like this, and she's going to the moon circle tonight. So, yeah, felt the need to braid the hair. I um, had a Reiki session today along with a little bit of cranial sacral work, and um, the lady told me that I was really connected to the energy of my grandmothers and my great-grandmothers right now. And I have this really beautiful picture of my great-grandmother, who was full-blood indigenous, uh, Creek uh, tribe, and she's in these like braids with all of her native garb, and um, I don't know, I'm just really feeling connected to that energy, so I felt the need to braid the hair tonight. I haven't done that in a really long time. Okay, I think we are going to officially get started here. I don't know why this braid, I keep messing with this braid because this headband is like pushing it though, so let me fix that or else I'm going to stare at it all night. <laughs> we are in the sun season of Leo, by the way. I am a Leo rising. So yeah, I'm just going to admit I'm a little I'm a little conceited about my image sometimes. And uh that just makes me human, right? <laughs> and we're in the energy of an Aquarian full moon, which is a little bit like the alien of the zodiac. So I'm trying to humanize myself here by obsessing over my hair for a moment on our virtual moon circle. <laughs> Okay, so we will officially get started here. I always like to start with just a nice, deep breath. So wherever you are tonight, sit tall, find your posture, make room for that breath to move all the way into your body. When you're ready, inhale through your nose. Deep, deep, deeply down, fill her up. And then exhale, just let it all go. Maybe it's open mouth, maybe not. But on this next one, we're going to do an open mouth exhale. Deep breath in. Let it all out. Soften your body. Let go. And on this next one, a little bit of noise with that exhale. Deep breath in. Let it go. 
shake it out if you need to. Ground in. Welcome to our Aquarius virtual full moon circle. If this is your first time tuning in to me, my name is Vina Lene Rachel. I am a moon priestess and intuitive, a channeler of the divine, and I host these moon circles every full and new moon that I can. Most full and new moons, I make it here, and I host these for free, and I have been doing this for free for about four or five years at this point. So we talk all about the moon in these circles. We'll talk about other astrology as well. For tonight's moon circle, we have a lot to cover. So I'll let you know in advance, we're probably going to go 90 minutes, if not longer. Probably 90 minutes. I'll try to keep it there if I can. We're in an Aquarius air energy sign, and I'm a Libra. I'm also an air sign, and so the air signs like to talk and like to bring in a lot of words, and I've been feeling the need to write a lot today and talk a lot today about what's going on in the cosmos, so don't be surprised if we're at that like 90-minute mark or running a little later tonight. But this is the Aquarius full moon. So we're going to talk about what a full moon is. We'll also talk about Aquarius energy. We're also going to talk about the sun season of Leo, another energy that we're in. Some other astrological insights as well. There are some interesting alignments coming up right now. This moon is aligning with Saturn. It's also squaring off with um, Uranus and also squaring off with both Rahu and Ketu in Vedic astrology. Uh, speaking of Vedic astrology, we're going to be touching base on that as well. So I'll be talking a little bit about astrology of this moon from the Eastern perspective of the world. I'm going to be doing a tarot reading and I'm going to do tarot readings, tarot card pulls for you tonight as well. I just felt the need to do that. Although as I'm reflecting now, I'm thinking about the uh, deck I wanted to use is at the studio, but I I better check and make sure I have my card deck. <laughs> this is Aquarius energy. But yes, so we are going to do some tarot readings tonight as well. I invite you to just simply make yourself comfortable tonight. You might want to have something um, to write with, to take notes with, and otherwise just enjoy your time tonight in this circle. Also feel free to utilize the chat tonight. We're all here coming together um, as a community to learn about the moon and to talk about the energy at hand. So feel free to utilize the chat to ask any questions or share anything that is coming up. I'm just going to get rid of these little notifications here and make sure that we are good to go. All right, I'm gonna grab my tarot cards, actually. I wanna make sure. I'm pretty sure I have them, but it's Aquarius energy, right? I don't. I just have our tarot cards for our tarot reading tonight. It was not meant to be. You know what? Maybe I'll do a little fun live tomorrow and do random tarot reading. So if you want, if you want me to pull a card for you, um, tomorrow actually it'll be tomorrow morning about 5 a.m i won't go live um but around 5 a.m i will be at the studio tomorrow where my deck is so if you want a card reading tonight for this aquarius moon by the way the energy will still be in it tomorrow let me know in the comments and i'll make sure to go back in these comments with your card and uh the energy that aligns with that card telling me I got a bunch of new comments, but I don't see the new comments. Ashley's trying to join. Um, she should be able to just log in, Lisa. You can share this link with her. Okay, she made it. Hi, Ashley. <laughs> we were just trying to figure out how to welcome you into the transmission. Perfect. All right, and do feel free to share this out to anybody, whether you're on Instagram or you're on Facebook. You should be able to just copy the little link and share it out. So share it with anybody else. Um, send them a little text with that link if you need to and invite them into this circle as well. Okay, perfect. So we were just mentioning that if you want a card pulled for your um, full moon portal to put it in the comments and I'll go back in these comments tomorrow with that card pulled for you. Uh, so you know what it is. Okay, let's start by talking a little bit about the full moon and what that means. Because if this is your first time tuning into a full moon, you might not know anything about it, right? Or tuning into a full moon circle. 
Well, the moon cycles every 28 to 29 and a half ish days. And it starts on day one with the new moon and about halfway through that lunar cycle, around day 14 of the lunar cycle, we run into the full moon. Also, if you were looking at outer space, if my human body, my earthly human body was planet Earth, I would have the sun on one side and I would have the moon on the other side right now. So the moon is actually receiving the energy of the sun and the light of the sun and reflecting that back onto the Earth. And that's why we can see the moon right now. That's why we can see it all lit up and we feel a little bit more amplified with our energy as well. We might even feel more awake right now because we're here during the evening and the evening is all lit up. You know, we do run on natural light. So during a new moon when it's dark, when the moon is in between the sun and earth and we can't really see things outside, we tend to feel a little bit more tired. We wanna be indoors. But when the moon is lit up and you can see outside at night, things are a lot more active. So animals will be more active. The locusts, I don't know if you can hear them. I don't know if you can hear them because I kind of have background noise turned off, but the locusts are going right now. And activity will be a little bit stronger at night. We're also in the peak of summer. Summer is always a time when people tend to hang out more in the nighttime um, or later into the night. So that's the energy that we're in right now because, you know, frankly, we can just see right now and we run off of that natural light. Now, there's also an energetic impact of the moon. Anytime that we're in full moon energy, we're receiving a lot of prana, a lot of life force energy. And prana is the energy at the top of our breath or at our inhale. So I always do this little fun example. If As long as it feels okay, as long as it doesn't make you feel off, take a deep breath in, shorter breath out, right away, deeper breath in, shorter breath out, deeper breath in, shorter breath out, maybe one more, deeper breath in, shorter breath out, let it all go, relax, breathe back to normal. We increase our prana when we have more inhale than exhale, and that might make you feel like you're running out of room to breathe, or it might make you feel dizzy or heightened or a little off in your energy. This is also known as an upregulating breath, by the way, so if you feel comfortable doing that breath, you can do a few rounds of that to upregulate your energy or up-level your frequency. So anytime we have heightened prana or heightened life force energy, not only are we heightened as human beings and all living things will be heightened right now, just like those locusts outside, but we also feel more pulled up towards the higher energetic chakras or the energetic frequencies, the higher points in our body. We're more in our head. We're kind of more in our daydream world. We're in, we're space cadets, especially under Aquarius energy. We're kind of in our la la lands and we might be extra anxious or we're overthinking things or we're feeling overwhelmed or we can't calm down our mind or we can't control our energy. We can't control our emotions and how we let them out through our throat, through our mouth, through these upper chakra realms. We kind of forget to ground. We're not as grounded, by the way, because the gravity of the earth is weakened during a full moon. So all of that heightened prana with the moon actually pulls us up towards the moon physically. And it's not like we step on a scale and we're like five pounds or 10 pounds lighter, but you do feel it kind of subtly. So energetically, you're a little lighter on your feet. You're a little bit more like woohoo, especially during the Leo season, the life of the cosmic party. You might feel a little lighter on your toes right now. You might want to dance. You might want to physically jump. You might want to get off the ground and climb a tree. You're wanting to move closer to the moon right now. And that isn't always the best thing for our energy, right? So when we're less grounded, when we're not focused, when we're pulled into our mind and we're not paying attention and we're not as aware of our human bodies, we can injure, we can hurt ourselves. Actually, ER visits are more frequent during a full moon than any other time of year um, or any other, sorry, any other time of the lunar cycle. Those um, super moons are the ones where you get more energetic visits than any other time of year, super full moons. But we also have more babies born during full moons, so there's just an amplified energy there. There's a lot of kind of crazy energy or that lunatic energy associated with a full moon. 
moon. By the way, think about the word lunatic, luna, as in lunation, as in lunar light and lunar energy, as in we are all ruled by the moon and we're all a little bit crazy under a full moon. And full moons are associated with crazy energy. Like people tend to be more crazy under a full moon, uh, more heightened, more triggered, a little bit just off from their normal selves. So if you've been feeling any of these energies right now, guess what? Perfectly normal stuff. You're just under the energy of the full moon, which happens every month. So it's kind of fun to maybe just like journal every day how you feel and notice what phase the moon is in. Maybe like at night before you go to bed, take a little reflection and journal how you felt that day and write down what phase the moon was in. And you'll start to notice a pattern between that new moon and full moon and everything in between how you feel, how you react, how you kind of carry out your day. And that also helps you to prepare a little bit more with the full moons to come, right? As you know, that energy starts to amplify. Maybe you know how you typically react and you can respond in a different way by being more mindful. Okay, I just want to check these comments really quick before we start to bring in our elements. Ashley said she definitely wants a reading. I got you, girl. I will pull it. Um, Amy wants a card pulled as well. Lisa wants a card pulled. I got you, ladies. I will pull those cards and let you know tomorrow what we get. By the way, I'm going to be using the Tarot of the Divine, which is associated with the moon, but also has mythological stories related to the feminine with each card. So I'm going to have not only a card for you, but I'll also have a story related to that that you can go research and look up that will be related to the message of the card. So it'll be a really cool card pull uh, for you under this Aquarius full moon. Okay, I always bring in the five elements into our moon circles, and I bring in certain elements each time, and you get to absorb that energy just by tuning into this transmission. If you do have these elements at home, you can also use them in your own full moon ceremonies or rituals or bring them into our circle now, or you can just take in the energy here if you don't have them. No worries if you don't have them because when we connect online in this digital ether space, we actually move beyond the thoughts of dimension and form. So you receive the energy of these elements as if you were just here sitting in front of me right now. So let's start by bringing in the element of earth to really ground us right as my nose itches which always means somebody's coming to see you, right? Old wives' tale. Is it an ancestor? My nanas and my grandma used to say this. <laughs> Getting into the earth energy, we are going to bring in the energy of a few crystals tonight. I always like to work with different crystals or gemstones. The first one I'm going to bring in is aqua marine. So this is the energy of Aquarius, which also means that aqua marine would be a good stone to work with. So I just want to bring these up. Um, I'll bring it up. I just want to make sure you've got it. Yeah, right here to the camera so you can receive that energy. It's supposed to autofocus, but you know how that goes. Really, I just want you to notice I have another one here a little bit smaller. I want you to notice, there it goes, it's trying to autofocus. Um that it's a white crystal, okay? So I'm gonna hold this up on the Instagram video as well, and as long as this Instagram video stays strong all the way through, I'll be able to use this for the recording and you can get a clearer picture, but it's white, right? So one of the reasons this stone is good to work with right now under the full moon in Aquarius or with Aquarian energy in general is because Aquarius is a zodiac sign that's often misinterpreted or mistaken for who they truly are. Number one, they are the first sign of the zodiac. And so when it comes to the lunar year, they're the first sign of the zodiac. And so it's a time of, um, let me be clear, Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, but in the lunar new year interpretation or Chinese new year interpretation, Aquarius energy brings in the first energy of the zodiac. So 
let's just be real. Astrology is a little woo-woo and weird, and the zodiac signs can be a little woo-woo and weird. And so this Aquarius energy is sometimes a little woo-woo and weird. Shout out if you know an Aquarius. Put it in the comments. Shout out if you are an Aquarius, sun, moon, or rising. I'd love to know that as well. But Aquarians are kind of the alien of the zodiac. They kind of come from the cosmos to begin with, and they bring a different vibe to the table. They're just kind of different, think in a different way, perceive things in a different way, and they're often misinterpreted because they're known as the water bearer, but they're not a water sign. They're an air sign. They think with their mind. So the picture that they pour from is their mind or their head. And the water that they pour are the stories that they share or their memories or reflections or wisdom that they want to share. So a lot of times people hear Aquarius. They see the sign for it, which is two little squiggles that are like the sign of the element of water. And they go, water sign. But they're not water signs. They're air signs. Shout out to Ashley, who is an Aquarius. Ashley, tell me if this is true, if you feel like this is something for you, that you are often misinterpreted um, with your, like who you are versus who you actually are. All right. So when we um, use aquamarine, again, you would think Aquamarine would be like an aqua color or a turquoise color or some color of water, but it's not. It's white, kind of like the element of air. So aquamarine is a deep, deep healing stone that really helps us get in touch with our truest self, with who we actually are, and kind of gets rid of all of that other junk that stands in the way of us actually embodying that and embracing that. Ashley, the Aquarius, agrees with what I said. (laughs) Ashley, another great stone that you probably like if you don't work with already is Labradorite. I love Labradorite. So pretty. Again, just let me adjust my camera real quick here. All right, so we've got this Labradorite energy. I'm going to bring it up to Facebook first. You can see the sheen. Ooh, good reflections here. Yes, yes, okay. Move it with the ring lights to get a little bit of sheen. And then here's another stone also, Labradorite. And you can see um, the light there. If my kid bangs on the door in a moment, just know we're in a full moon and he's a fire sign. <laughs> here's on Instagram. See that beautiful rainbow? Oh, Labradorite's one of my favorite stones and maybe it's because I'm an air sign as well but that's because labradorite comes from the cosmos so it actually forms from a meteorite down in or down in up in labrador canada so this is called labradorite because it's native solely to labrador canada and it helps us to connect beyond these earthly realms. It helps us to connect to the ether, maybe helps us believe in some of those woo-woo things beyond what we can't see or maybe understand astrology a little bit more. But it's also a great stone just to work with your mind or with your thinking mind or your philosophical mind or your dreaming mind. But anything that you could maybe see on the inside but not on the outside feel, hear, intuition, stuff, all of that can be enhanced with Labradorite. I also like to use Labradorite not only for the sixth and seventh chakras, but for a chakra balancing stone overall. So if you're looking to balance all seven of your main chakras, then you might want to work with Labradorite. Ashley says that people think I'm a very strong person who doesn't feel the pressure, but I do intensely feel it. Yeah, absolutely. Because another thing is I think when people are intelligent, right, or they use a lot of their thinking mind, they're more rational, they're more logical, and people think that they can handle things. But truly, 
air signs, people who live in their mind, we think all the time. Libras can associate as well. We overthink everything and we take everything in and we overanalyze everything and we're always taking everybody into consideration and that can be a lot. And so air signs typically are extra sensitive and they do need time for themselves to refresh, to reconnect. They need a lot of quiet time as well, just because they take in so much from everybody else. And they probably spend a lot of time talking in the external or expressing in the external as well. So sometimes it's good for an air sign to just kind of turn off their mind and relax and just kind of like disappear from the planet, <laughs> disappear to their own little special spot for a little while. Okay, so let's move on to our next earthly element. We have these crystals, this aquamarine and this Labrador, right? But I always use a smudging material as well. So tonight I just have white sage. You know, we are halfway through the lunar year. The lunar new year happens when the new moon is in Aquarius. Now we're on the opposite of that, the full moon in Aquarius. This is an ultimate check-in point on the lunar year and a really good time to cleanse and reset our energy. Now, before I light this white sage, I just want to note that I source my white sage from a trusted source that gets it um, sustainably, ecologically. They're not taking it off of tribal land. They're not taking it from a place that they shouldn't or over harvesting. This is coming from a good source. And any of my smudging materials, I don't waste. I use them down to the last little bit. But you do want to be careful. You do want to be mindful. Speaking of being sensitive to others and sensitive to the collective, that's very Aquarius energy. Aquarius energy is all about wanting the good for all. So if you're using Palo Santo, white sage, you know, some of these um, smudging materials, you might want to make sure that you're getting them from a reliable source that's getting them from the land in an ecological, sustainable way, and they're respecting the land in the process of the harvesting, and they're not wasting um, or anything like that. So just something to consider. I'm going to light this white sage with the element of fire, bringing in our next element, by the way. And fire is transformative, right? When something burns, it'll never be the way it was before. Do you have any little burn scars I have on me just from Fun fact, I'm a biochemistry major from college many moons ago. <laughs> I used to like to dabble in the world of chemistry, and I have a lot of little chemical burns and fire burns, and they're going to be there pretty much forever. Fire is transformative. So you can see now that when I combine this earth element with fire, I get this smoke or this wind. So I'm going to bring this up to you in both spaces here, whether you're on Facebook or Instagram. I'm going to cleanse our technology that we're using to transmute through. Probably a good idea anyway after doing this big master class the past four days. And also just let you receive that smoke because remember it moves beyond this dimension of space. You get it right now here. And also even if you're tuning into the replay, you're going to get this energy of the smoke and the rest of the elements. One thing about the ether is the energy becomes amplified over time because more and more people tune into it. Give a little wave to everybody tuning in right now. All right, I'm also going to take this around me. Counterclockwise releases, by the way. So if you're smudging in your home and you need to release, which you probably do, go in a counterclockwise direction in your rooms counterclockwise direction around your windows and whatnot. And of course, always have a window open to ventilate when you're smudging. So I'm just going to let this hang out in my conch shell and the smoke will continue to rise wherever it needs to go. I'm going to let that go to you. It's already starting to burn out. So it looks like we didn't really need to smudge a lot tonight, which is good. It means we don't have a lot of crazy vibes to get rid of. And I'm not going to lie, the past couple of moon circles we've done, there's been a lot of smoke to the point that it's even like really affected my throat chakra. So Good job on all of you working on yourselves lately because uh, I can tell that you don't need as much smudging as normal. Okay, let's move on to our water element. So tonight I have a little bit of green and lemon ginger tea, just a little hot tea um, to help detox because full moons are a time of release. But you could also be using 
just water or something else to drink, some sort of liquid to bring in a bit of the water element into your circle. You could also work with aromatherapy. So again, going back to this concept of Aquarius being the water bearer, but an air sign, that water air energy is great for essential oils because they are collected through steam distillation and we use the process of inhalation. We use our olfactory system to take in the power of these oils. So I use doTERRA oils personally um, because they are absolutely pure. Again, talking about sourcing your oils from a pure place, just like you're sourcing your smudging materials from a um, pure place. We have vetiver first. I love working with vetiver, V-E-T-I-V-E-R. Vetiver comes from Haiti and it helps to ground us. It is a root oil and it's highly responsible for helping us to sleep well and dream well. So if you're not doing well with your sleep, you have restless sleep, or maybe you can't focus on your meditations, when we're in this like fire energy, which we're in the Leo season, which is fire, and then we have the air sign of Aquarius coming in, air plus fire is more fire. It's a lot of distraction and an inability to focus or rest or calm down. And so vetiver might help to ground you a little bit more. Vetiver is also good for just helping you to like I said, dream better. So we're halfway through the lunar year. This is kind of our last opportunity to be planting seeds of intention, thinking about what we want to harvest within the next six months. And vetiver might help you get a little bit more clear about the details and specifics of your dream. Amy asked if this is a good full moon to charge water. Speaking of water, absolutely. This is a great full moon to charge your water. So get your vessels of water out underneath the moon soak in that lunar light and some full moons are going to you know full moons are going to bring in a different energy depending what sign right <coughs> sorry i got choked up from that smudging smoke the full moon in aquarius is an air sign representing a lot of like philosophy and wisdom and concern for the collective so taking in the water that's charged up under an Aquarian full moon is going to enhance those energies within you. So that's something to consider as well. Some people always ask me like, what if I can't set it out? It's because something might mess with it. Or what if I, um, what if it's raining? Or what if I uh, don't see the full moon and it's cloudy or whatever it may be? Uh, you can always put it inside in the window where the light shines in. As long as it's exposed to the external light in some way, even if your window's closed, that moon is going to charge that water, and that's good as well. Um, also a good time to focus on eating because we're in this fire air energy, and neither one of those energies likes to focus a lot on either eating or drinking. So you could set out some moon fruit tonight. I always like setting out like an apple, you know, talking about um, wisdom and lessons and all of that. Maybe setting out the apple representing education or teacher energy um and eating that apple with the full moon by the way i think it's funny right now because the full moon is literally lining up with kids going back to school today on a thursday i saw so many kids so many kids on facebook uh with their families in all different parts of the country going back to school today of all days underneath this aquarius full moon a full moon representing the thinking philosophical collective storytelling mind <laughs> all the kids that went back to school today were crazy because of the full moon and they were all sharing their stories from summer i guarantee it my kids three but i guarantee that all of the kids that were school age were going through that energy today so moving on to the next oil clary Sage, talking about getting clear on your dreams or being able to focus or being able to meditate or relax. Clary Sage is another great alternative. To me, it smells like a tea, like an earthy tea, but it does bring in that grounding effect as well. Again, it's a form of sage. So anytime we're using these smudging materials under a full moon, we're providing deep release. Clary Sage will help you with your 
third eye. It's going to help you with your six senses and release any blockages there. It's also going to help you to focus more if your mind's all over the place. I like to throw clary sage in my diffuser um, around when I meditate, sleep, journal, those sorts of things. But you could also inhale it directly from the bottle. I'm going to leave the lid on. And by the way, I just want to put out there if you are pregnant or um, if you're pregnant or getting close to going into labor and you don't want to go into early labor, you want to avoid using clary sage during those times. However, if you're pregnant and you are trying to go into labor, you can also rub diluted clary sage on your low back to help with um, the energetic uterine surges. So clary sage can be used for a variety of things, but it's also great just for meditation and tapping into your sixth sense. So I'm going to take a drink of this hot tea just to connect to the water myself and nourish my throat chakra. Lisa said she already has her water out. Ashley says she's not drinking tea, but does red wine count? Absolutely, sister. So I mentioned that although we are in the moon of Aquarius, it's opposing the sun, right? And the sun is currently in the season of Leo, and it's no wonder with you being in Aquarius energy, you know, opposing that Leo moon, you're feeling a little amplified with the Leo energy to party and let loose and let that red wine help you to, you know, be a little freer and be a little free of mind. By the way, that's something that air signs tend to battle with, right? A lot of times, um, and no judgment, Ashley, enjoy your glass of red wine. Of course, everything is always in moderation, right? But air signs tend to need to numb out or drown out the noise, so to say. And a lot of times they can be prone to addiction. So you have to be careful with that. I don't know if anybody knows my own personal story. I, in this, in this energy of Aquarius, the storyteller, I think this is an appropriate story to tell. Long before I got on this journey of what I do now and who I am now, I was, oh gosh, Ashley, this is a story for you. This is a story for Lisa. This is a story for the both of you, okay? My gosh, I, you, the timing of everything, right? And this is the star of divine timing in Vedic astrology too. But I need to share this story with you ladies. This is important. Um, I lost my father very suddenly, very shockingly, not in the same way as you, but through suicide and it was a very traumatic event in my life. It initiated a lot of anxiety. It's the first time I ever experienced a panic attack. It continued to happen after that. I really dealt with a lot of emotions and overwhelm and overthinking, of course, right? Because a lot of questioning about what happened and why it happened and those sorts of things. And in the process of all of that, I fell deep into alcoholism. I was drinking a lot. I was drinking literally to function. I was going to my job. I was a multi-store retail manager, highly functioning, right? I'm one of those people that has high functioning anxiety. I was highly functioning, but I was going home and I was drinking about a half a bottle of wine or at least three or four beers just to numb the pain, the grief, the sadness, and the ability to sleep and rest. And it wasn't until I started doing yoga that I walked into a yoga class and started doing yoga, I'd say maybe like a couple of weeks in to doing yoga at a local gym that I was um, teaching fitness at, that I started drinking less because I started feeling a lot better in yoga. I was processing my emotions in a healthy way and I didn't need to like drown all that out with my sorrows anymore. And then slowly but surely I got to a space where um, I didn't drink at all, or I was able to manage my alcohol. A lot of times, ironically, I was actually bartending on the side as I drank less and less, and then eventually I broke away from that world altogether. But yeah, we just have to be careful. If we're air signs, we need to be careful of the things that we use to numb or drown out the noise. So it's just a little lesson, wisdom, story, mm, sister, that I want to share with you as well. But enjoy your wine. Please enjoy your wine because you are opposing that Leo energy and you're feeling the need to do it right now and kind of be free, which is the energy of Aquarius as well. Okay, so one final element, right? We have these earth elements of Labrador, right? Aquamarine. We also have our white sage that we burn by combining with the element of fire. 
bringing out the element of air, wind, smoke. We also used the element of water through aromatherapy, vetiver and clary sage to connect to water energy or maybe you just have some sort of liquid that you're enjoying tonight. The fifth element we've already mentioned, it's the ether. It is the akash. It is all that ever was and all that ever will be. It is the record of our experiences, both human experience and soulful experience. And this recording will live on in the ether forever and ever, as long as I allow it to. And so the ether is a place where there is no time. There is no real dimension. It can kind of go beyond the concept of dimension. And that's why I love doing these moon circles with the ether online in the digital world because the energy will never die. And anytime somebody tunes into the energy, it gets amplified. It continues to expand and grow just like the ether of the universe. You're also able to receive in the energy of these elements and everything else that channels through tonight. So with that, with these five elements that we've brought into our circle tonight, I always like to bring in the guides and guardians of the five directions, okay? So let's start with maybe just closing the eyes if you can. If you can't, that's okay. I'm going to take a deep breath. And we're going to start by bringing in the guides and guardians of the east with the element of air. We're underneath this Aquarian air sign with this moon, this full moon in Aquarius. And it's an energy of new beginnings again. We've got our last opportunity to plant new seeds of growth and harvest one last time over the rest of this lunar year. And this is also a time to slow down and just think about how far we've come and where we want to go. We also know that air is the energy of deep breaths to help ground us. And so we invite in the guides and guardians, the element of air in the east. We thank them for being in our circle tonight. We also invite in the guides and guardians of the south with their element of fire. This fiery Leo season that we're in. The fiery energy of that Leo sun reflecting onto the full moon, reflecting onto the earth, lighting us up, igniting our desires, filling us with excitement and maybe other forms of fire as well. And so we ask that we can channel that fire always in a way that serves, that transforms us for a better life, a greater good. And we thank the guides and guardians of the South with their element of fire for being in our circle tonight. We also bring in and invite in the guides and guardians of the West with their element of water. Water is always affected by the moon, our watery emotions of our sacral chakra, our internal moon. We know that those tides might be moving around in a more chaotic way right now. As energy is stirred up all around us, we also... Think about the concept of water as time, past flowing into present, flowing into future. As this full moon aligns with Saturn, the planet of karma, reminding us that every behavior and action has a result and reaction. And so we ask ourselves to be mindful and present, and we thank the guides and guardians of the West with their element of water for helping us with that as they hang out in our circle tonight. We also invite in the guides and guardians of the north element of earth to help deeply ground us during this uncertain, shaky time. We know that Uranus is squaring off this moon, which might actually lead to shaky things on this planet, earthquakes, natural things, but also energetic, shaky things as well. And so... We also remember that the earth connects us to our ancestors, those that have been here before us and learned lessons, and they're still providing us with deep wisdom now. We just have to be open to receive it. We also invite in the earthly elements, those four elements of earth, air, water, fire, and any other earthly elements that serve us as we 
work with our own magic and alchemy, also knowing that this moon aligns with the Vazus, the gods of the elements in the eastern side of the world. And so we thank the guides and guardians of the north with their element of earth for being in our circle tonight. And also we invite in the guides and guardians of the fifth element, the ether, the akash, the things beyond the earthly realms. We call in the protectors, the angels, the archangels, the deities, cosmic races, cosmic beings, source consciousness. Anything from above that needs to come down below to us now, we invite it in and we thank the guides and guardians of the fifth element, the ether, for being in our circle tonight. Mm, my third eye is tingling tonight. <laughs> With that, our circle is officially, officially, officially open. I'm going to give a little wave to these people signing on to Instagram. By the way, if you're just signing on, welcome. Continue to say hi in the comments. Let me know how you're doing with this full moon. If you have any questions about what's going on with all of that. I am live streaming on Facebook and Instagram if you just signed on, by the way. So if you're like, why is she looking at two different places? That's why. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit more about... Aquarius energy. We've kind of talked about it already. It's this first sign of the lunar year. We're at the halfway point of the lunar year as the lunar new year starts with the new moon in Aquarius. We're in the full moon now. Aquarius is kind of that alien of the zodiac. They're a little weird. They're a little different. Love you, Ashley. You're a little weird and different. And I know you embrace that. <laughs> and I'm a little weird and different, and I don't even know where Aquarius aligns in my chart. I'd have to go and look at that. I don't have my chart memorized. I do too many charts to do that. But it's a little off. It's the alien of the zodiac. And you know, one thing about Aquarius energy is they're so detached from the earth, they're actually interested in a lot of things on this planet. So Aquarius energy brings... Um, expansive energy. So when you're in the energy of air, especially fixed air, it's just air that is air, which means air is limitless and air is always around us. And there's a lot of things in the air to think about and ponder and learn and take in. And so Aquarius energy likes to learn a lot of things. Now, one problem with Aquarius energy, now the full moons tend to highlight some things that, you know, we need to work on as well, is Aquarius energy is not the greatest at sticking to things. Again, they have this detachment to the earth. They're kind of from the outer worlds or the outer dimensions. And so they can change on a dime. They're just like air, like wind coming in, blowing in all of, sudden, all of a sudden, like coming in like a whirlwind or a tornado or a gust of wind in a hurricane, this Aquarius energy can blow through sometimes and make people change very quickly. Aquarius people will change very quickly, change their interests, change their passions, change their career, change their focus of education. They'll change anything. They'll change their life. They'll leave their, they'll break up with their boyfriend in 25 years and move away to another country and never look back. But that's the thing. They never look back. They just kind of like change and move on and move on without that attachment. And so this is an energy we're coming to right now. So this moon, this full moon in Aquarius over the past few days or the next few days, you might have some random opportunity come your way or some spontaneous exper um, experience that you can embrace and carry out. There's a lot of spontaneity with Aquarius energy. And whether you're an Aquarius sun, moon, rising, or Aquarius rules your chart or not, we all still feel that energy under the full moon because it's so amplified right now. Um, Amy said she loves the weirdness of her Aquarius friend. Ashley, the Aquarius, says, why is this so accurate. I got another story for you ladies or for anybody on the transmission. And maybe even this Aquarius will tune into the transmission. You never know because she's always just really, really go on the go. You never know with her. But when I went to India, by the way, air signs kind of gravitate to air signs sometimes as friendships because we all think on higher levels or feel on different levels, interpret on different levels and different perspectives. When I went on my spiritual pilgrimage to India in 2017, 
every single person in my group was a Libra. There was even one girl that had the same birthday as me. So we're all a bunch of air signs. And then the one person person that wasn't a Libra was an Aquarius and fun fact everybody there was going to India on a spiritual pilgrimage had a little bit of a background in the Hindu culture or story or you know Hindu faith we were going to a lot of different temples had a yoga background or a meditation background this girl was just in it for the ride like one of her friends who she met in the ether by the way in a digital Facebook group like spiritual support group friend that she made there online was coming on this trip who was on the trip with us was like do you want to go and she's like sure why not in true Aquarian fashion and decided at the last minute to go to India on a three and a half week pilgrimage had no idea what we were talking about with the temples and the whole experience she was just there for it and since then like she's lived in like three different countries I think um Pretty sure she's living in Colombia right now or last time I knew she was living in Colombia although she did spend some time recently in Patagonia and she was blogging from there and then at some point she went back through India and Thailand and I can't remember where else and she even went back and studied some yoga and tarot this girl is all over it and before she did any of that she was a nurse back in America so Aquarius energy <laughs> all over always on the go, always having new experiences and changing topics, ideas, and interests on a dime. That's the energy we're in right now. So be expecting the unexpected. If it comes your way, embrace it and ask yourself, do you want to be spontaneous and see what there is out there? Or do you want to be safe and stay grounded and stay where you are? The energy's up to you. Now, I've talked a little bit about some other alignments in the cosmos right now. Well, first off, we're in Leo season. We're in the sun season of Leo, and we will be until August 22nd, until we hit over into that Virgo season. Shout out to Lisa, my Virgo on the transmission. Um, we are now in this energy of the Leo lion or lioness, the energy of fire, but we've also just come out of the lion's gate portal. So the lion's gate portal opened on July 26th. It will close on August 12th. It peaks every year on August 8th. And August 7th, 8th, and 9th are the most potent times to receive the energy of this portal. It's an ascension portal. It's full of light codes. Yeah, I'm talking all woo-woo because that's where we're getting tonight because this is an Aquarius moon. So let's dive in to the woo tonight. Let's up level our frequency. Let's broaden our horizons and open our mind and listen to what this transmission has to offer, right? Take what you take and leave the rest. It's all good to me. Lionsgate portal is a time when Sirius, as in the Sirius star that resides in the constellation Canis Major, as in K9, it's the dog star, Sirius satellite radio. We've got that little dog, right? The Sirius sun starts to, or the Sirius star, sorry, I twist my words because Sirius was once brighter than the sun and it's older than the sun. It's considered a spiritual sun or a spiritual star. And as it rises from July 26th through August 12th and becomes visible, it eventually peaks on August 8th and aligns with the Great Pyramids of Giza and the Sphinx. So the Egyptian cultures look to the Sirius star as a sign of rising creative energy and fertility because it's also known as the Nile star because when it started to rise, the Nile River would also start to rise. And at that peak at 8-8, the Nile River would flood and it would irrigate, irrigate the crops and bring in more creative flow and creative energy. Now we can also think about this in our own kind of spiritual perspective. Are there spiritual, soulful, seeded dreams that you still need to plant and water and nourish and tend to? Do you have crops already growing? Intentions that you said over the past six months that you're still tending to, you're still trying to make those dreams come true. Now is the time to water those dreams, to give those dreams attention, to give them your 
love and focus and maybe decide what's worth your love and focus and if there's anything that needs to be washed away, okay? As my throat chakra starts to dry up, I'm going to get a drink of water. So we've seen this in nature on the collective right now. On July 26th and 27th, when the Lionsgate portal opened, we had record flooding in St. Louis, Missouri, here in North America. Also on the peak of the portal on 8-8, and also kind of in between the time it opened until 8-8-8-9, we had record flooding in the West in North America. Death Valley just got a year's worth of rain in like a day which it's an inch and a half and you think no big deal, but an inch and a half of rain in Death Valley all of a sudden is a big deal. And there's major flooding and damage from that right now. South Korea is going through major flooding right now. During the Lionsgate portal and the new moon that followed right after on July 27th, that was the beginning of monsoon season in India. And there was a great crash of rain even here in southeast Iowa on the morning of 8-8. There was a huge thunderstorm. So there is a rising of these waters all over our planet right now, physically, with nature. And you got to ask yourself, what is nature trying to take care of right now? What is nature making space for or washing away or cleansing? Because water is that cleansing, purifying energy, Right. And we can do the same within us. We can ask ourselves what we need to wash away, release, get rid of that no longer serves. Natural disasters. I read this book talking about stories, again, Aquarius energy, but I read this book called Destiny of Souls recently. And anybody who's dealt with death um, recently or is kind of just wondering about souls and death. I highly recommend this book, Destiny of Souls. I know, Amy, I think, I don't know if you finished it, Amy. I know you were reading it. It's all about this therapist who learned how to regress people back before they died and learn about their soul lives. And one of the questions that he asks in the book is um, to a particular soul who belongs to a soul group responsible for repairing energy on planet earth after a natural disaster and he asks well if you can repair the energy after the natural disaster why don't you just prevent the natural disaster from happening in the first place and he says natural disasters are part of the program of that planet or that human experience it's not his to question it's part of the divine rhythm of life and it's simply something for us to experience as we carry out this human experience, right? It's kind of weird to put in words. I struggle with my words sometimes when I'm trying to interpret soul messages. But I think you get the drift, right? Like we can't um, mess with nature, right? We've talked about that before. We can't mess with nature because nature will always find a balance. And these natural disasters are things that we're meant to go through to challenge us with a little bit of divine timing and divine intervention. And we have to ask ourselves how we're going to behave and respond to the situation that is truly out of our control, that we couldn't do anything about. It's all about how we respond that sets forth the standard of what will play out from there. So right now, you know, this is a time when we have all these floods and all these natural disasters maybe happening and maybe more to come. And we have to just ride the waves of the storm, so to say, kind of tether yourself down like they did in Twister and ride out the tornado because it will pass. This too shall pass. And on the other side, there's always that rainbow after the storm. And at the rainbow, there's the pot of gold. So we know that there is a greater good coming. We know that all of this change and transformation is for our greater good, but it might be challenging and hard to navigate along the way, right? Another challenging thing in the cosmos right now, in addition to this Lionsgate portal activating a lot of natural flooding and natural rising of waters, this moon aligns with Saturn. Saturn is the planet of karma. I don't know if I need to even say a lot more about that. Just know that, again, 
unexpected opportunities may arise and may have you questioning if you decide to move forward into this new opportunity and learn a new lesson or you stay where you are. You also might have the same experiences coming around again right now and that's just to remind you to maybe decide if you want that to continue to loophole and come back around and around again or if you want to get comfortable with the uncomfortable and dive into some form of the unknown instead. Now, we are, this moon, this is a little bit more, uh, this is deeper astrology, we're going a little deeper, but this moon and Saturn aligning are also squaring off with Uranus right now. And Uranus is the planet of rebellion, shakeups, innovation, a lot of quick and swift change for the greater good. So again, we kind of have this karmic shakeup happening on the collective and we need to know that it's going to be okay and that it's for our growth and our next evolution. This is a good time to segue into Vedic astrology in the eastern side of the world, but if you have any question about the western stuff that I just talked about, feel free to put it in the comments. Um, Ashley says she's all about the woo-woo as an Aquarius as well. So yeah, Aquarius energy is definitely attracted to things beyond what we can see beyond the physical, so the metaphysical, the spiritual, the woo, definitely all of the air signs jams, but definitely um, Aquarius energy as well. So, you know, one thing is if you've been curious about these woo-woo topics, sorry, as I say things, my ears are feeling a little clogged. These woo-woo topics, you know, these are things that you might want to dive into. They're, they're good to dive into, um, especially right now during this full moon in Aquarius, because you're supported to kind of go beyond what you're used to or you're you're supported to think a little bit differently. All right, let's move on and talk about Vedic astrology right now. And first, I just want to bring up the concept of Rahu and Ketu, the head and tail of the cosmic karmic snake, because the tail is also squaring off with this moon as well as the head of the snake on the other side. So we have Rahu lining up with Uranus, squaring off with the moon aligned in Saturn. We also have Ketu squaring off with the moon aligned in Saturn. What does that mean? Well, that means that our south node or our past life experiences are maybe karmically rising up again, being illuminated with this full moon for us to make a decision on where we want to move forward, North Node, Rahu, as a collective or within ourselves going forward. So we've got the lesson, we've got the thing from the past, the thing coming up, it's illuminated, and we decide where to go from here. And no matter what we choose, there's going to be something that comes out of it that's probably going to be a big deal, a big shakeup in one way or another. And I think the word shakeup just makes us get scared or think negative right away, but know that shakeups can be a great thing, right? Shakeups shake things off, okay? Shakeups shake things off, so they get rid of the things that are stuck in our system. So shakeups are a good thing. Embrace that. Trust that that rainbow with the pot of gold will be on the other side of that crazy, chaotic storm. Now in Vedic astrology, this moon is also in the nakshatra of Danishtra. Danishta, sorry, not, not tra. Danishta, Danishta nakshatra. Danishta is the star of symphony. It's uh, sometimes represented by the flute or the drum that Lord Shiva plays. So in this dance of divine destruction and creation, Lord Shiva plays this drum as he dances in his tandava, his destructive creative dance. And that's sometimes the energy associated with this moon. So again, right now we have this energy of both tearing down and building up major change happening, but for a greater good, okay? Lord Shiva rules yoga as well. He's the first master of yoga, and he's all about energetic alignment and balance. So this is, again, nature coming in and finding balance or taking control. And the energy of the moon on the eastern side of the world is also reflecting on that and thinking about that energy right now. Now, we can also consider this to be the star of song or sound or harmony. There's that balance again. It's also like the star of 
frequency or rhythm. Thinking about divine rhythm, the divine dance, Lord Shiva's creation and destruction, the divine dance of work and rest, right? Of life, death, rebirth, right? These dances of life, these experiences. These are things that are coming up right now. The star of rhythm or symphony or sound also represents divine timing and divine intervention. So this full moon says, hey, things are going to happen, sometimes out of your control. You got to learn to dance through it. By the way, if anybody's familiar with the song The Dance by Garth Brooks, it's a song I played at my father's funeral. It's deeply profound in the lyrics when it comes to this energy that we're talking about right now, like riding, riding the waves of the storm and experiencing the pain and really like not numbing yourself to the chaos, but actually just like getting yourself right in the center of it all. Because on the other side of it, you wouldn't regret a thing that you realize that life's a dance and you've learned your lessons from it and you're, you're better off. You're a better person because of that storm or that chaos that you had to learn to dance through and you were forced to dance through as well. So, you know, under this moon, maybe talking about storytelling as well, go look up the lyrics to Garth Brooks, the dance, this beautiful song and um, beautiful lyrics for the energy that we have going on right now. By the way, welcome everybody that keeps coming to the circle. I'm just saying hi, but feel free to say hi in the comments or put anything there if you want. This star, this Danishta Nakshatra, is also known as the wealth bringer or the wealthiest, okay? So it reminds us that we are wealthy. We are abundant at all times. We always have room for more. There's room for all, and it's all coming our way. This moon is also going to remind us to detach from the material a little bit and find abundance in different forms. Do you have your health do you have this breath that you're breathing? Do you have this body? Do you have this life? You know, what other ways are you wealthy in your life with family and friends and love and support? Maybe you have a strong barter game like I do. That's a great way to embrace wealth without embracing money, right? But know that we are abundant no matter what. And even in these times of challenge, when things are chaotic and stormy and we feel like things are never going to go our way or our dreams aren't going to come true or life's never going to be good again, we have to remember to find things to be grateful for. Because if we can find that abundance, even in the most challenging of times, we will continue to cultivate that energy and frequency of gratitude and the universe will continue to give us things to be grateful for. We will attract things to be abundant for because that's the mindset and the energy that we want to soak and hang out and float in. So this is a time to embrace abundance from a different perspective, but also know that this is the star of the wealth bringer and that all of this chaos, there's going to be that rainbow with a pot of gold on the other side. You just might not see it until down the road. 10 years ago in 2012, February of 2012, when I lost my father, I would have never known I'm doing what I do now. That experience, that moment, him leaving, that put me where I am today, doing what I do today. And it's an experience that in a weird way, talking about being weird and different, it's in a weird way I can be grateful for now. Because I wouldn't be where I am today if it w didn't happen, okay? Ashley said she's pulling in a lot of nature energy tonight. She had a story to share in a span of five minutes. She had a hummingbird. Um, I have to expand this. Sorry. Flutter right next to her at night. And then a few minutes later, a deer ran into her yard, stopped dead in its tracks, stared at her on its porch and took off. And she lives in town. Sister, I had a baby hummingbird on my path, on my nature walk two nights ago, two days ago. We almost stepped on it. The only other time I've ever had hummingbird come into my life in that way was with my Nana and I instantly felt my grandmother with you. Hummingbirds are always a sign of spirit from the other world in the Native American tradition. So you know what that means. Okay. Um, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for sharing by the way. So we have this star of symphony, the star of divine timing, reminding us to be abundant it's ruled by what we call the Vazus. The Vazus are eight gods that were cast down to earth as a punishment. 
And in the process of being on Earth, they learn to embrace the elements of Earth to cultivate their magic and survive, essentially. This is a great moon to be cultivating your magic from within, to use the earthly elements. We brought the elements into our circle tonight. We invited in the guides and guardians of the elements and the five directions, right? Also working with maybe mundane items. So if you don't have Labradorite and Aquamarine and Vetiver and Clary Sage oils and white sage and green tea, right? Could you simplify your elements for this full moon? For earth, could you go outside and pick up something from the earth that has a meaning to you? A rock, a leaf, a piece of tree, a stick, a piece of wood. The earth itself, gather up some earth, put it in a jar. Very witchy to do that, by the way. The, the dirt in the jars. But us witches get it. <laughs> right? So there's your earth energy. Your um, air energy. Feathers. Okay? We can usually find a feather on the ground. In fact, a feather floated by me on my tarot reading tonight. But if you don't have a feather, just breathing. Taking a deep breath and using the power of your exhale. By the way, blowing onto things. Brings in that power of your breath and air. Bring in the more internal magic of air. Fire. Well, fire is pretty easy to find around these days. But if you don't have a lighter or a match, <laughs> you could do breath of fire. You could do a little cardio to get yourself fired up internally. You could build your own internal fire. Work up a sweat. Hang out in the heat. It's summertime. Get outside where it's warm, right? There's your fire. And then we have the water. Well, duh, water. You could charge up some moon water to make it extra special, but just having any form of liquid, water, wine, blood. If you happen to be on your cycle right now, save your moon blood, give it back to the earth for more grounding throughout the rest of your next cycle can work with your moon blood and it can be very potent by the way but there you go there's your your ether is already here right and that's a very easy way to work with the elements without having to spend a lot of money right or go shopping it's all already here so from the eastern side of the world the moon is asking you to simplify and to not get so overwhelmed with everything. And be reminded that you always have the magic from within. But you have to cultivate it using this attitude of gratitude. These feelings of abundance. And you have to behave in a way that's energetically balanced and aligned. And coming from a higher consciousness when you come into challenging times. Which might just arrive between now and the rest of this lunar cycle or the next six months through the rest of this lunar year. By the way, on the eastern side of the world, there's a lot of dedication to Lord Shiva right now. There's a lot of different um, celebrations to honor Lord Shiva. So that's going on on the eastern side of the world amongst the Hindu traditions right now. So that's what I have as far as the astrology of this moon, Vedic and Western. I told you we'd go over. We're already coming up on almost an hour and a half. In the spirit of getting weird and tapping into the woo, I have a tarot reading for you tonight. And I actually have four cards instead of the usual three. So I want to share that with you. I pulled these cards earlier today. By the way, you can get a written interpretation of the reading on my website, or you can learn more about what I wrote about the moon going to my website. And if you haven't subscribed to uh, my e-newsletter, go ahead and do that too. You can I'm pretty sure you can just pop on my website, vinalinae.com, and scroll to the bottom of the page, and there's a way to subscribe. But if you don't subscribe that way, I did a really fun 
free uh, four-part, really, Manifesting Masterclass over the past four days, Manifestation Masterclass. And we talked all about using this Lionsgate portal and astrology and a little bit of the woo and, you know, to form our vision boards and get specific about our dreams and kind of figure out how to fast track becoming successful at reaching your dreams um, compared to how you've been on your manifestation journeys before. So I put that out there because you can still get the recordings. I'm going to be sending out all of the recordings with all of the extra email goodies and free content tomorrow. So if you go to vinolanae.com slash manifesting masterclass, not only will you be able to sign on to that, but you will also get subscribed to my e-newsletters. And I send out an e-newsletter every full moon and new moon uh, to let you know what's going on more. So if you want to dive deeper, you can sign up and subscribe to me that way, talking about the energy of the ether and the digital tonight as well. All right, so I want to take a deep breath. Of course, you can continue to put things in the comments if you want. I am going to just pause, get in the right mindset to channel the energy of these cards. By the way, this Star of Symphony is also sometimes known as all of the instruments of the divine or represented by all of the instruments of the divine. And in case you didn't know this, my spiritual name, Vina, which was given to me when I went to India in 2017, Vina means instrument of the divine. Normally I call myself the channeler of the divine because that's how I got my name. But the Vina is kind of a lyre like instrument that was played by the goddess Saraswati. And Saraswati is known for the energy of the air and the ether. She's the thinking goddess. She's the goddess of education and music and the arts. And so I bring this energy to you tonight simply because I am Vina, the instrument of the divine. And we're in the star of symphony or the music of the divine with this transmission. So I do hope it serves you, even though it's extra long. I just felt like I had so much that I need to share with you tonight. So thank you for being here and thank you for being here extra long. Okay, I'm just going to wave to these people tuning in and I am going to introduce these cards after I take a deep breath. Hmm. Taking a moment to call in the messages of the cards and honor the energy they have to offer in our circle tonight. Thank you for the tarot, for giving us a different perspective, for giving us a different way to receive what we need to receive from the other sides. So typically I pull a past, present, and future card. I certainly did that tonight. We'll start with those and then we'll talk about that fourth bonus card after. Our cards all pulled up right tonight. Hallelujah. Because the past like three, four readings, and you can go to my website and read about them, there's been so many reversed cards. And I finally pulled up right. And let me tell you how I pulled these cards tonight, okay? <laughs> or today, I guess. When I felt the need to pull the cards, I, I always tune in and I shuffle in the way that I intuitively feel. So sometimes I'm shuffling like the typical tarot reader shuffles. Sometimes I'm doing the typical like poker player shuffle. Tonight or today, the energy was like, get chaotic. It's it's Leo, it's Aquarius, it's fire and air, just get crazy. So I threw the cards down, piled down, and I just like, just like chaotically, like chaos, nature, storm, like swirled them around. And during that process of moving them around, a card popped out. Well, that first card, Queen of Pentacles, okay? I'll go further. All of the cards popped out that way individually. So I got the first three cards kind of popping out as I shuffled about every shuffle, 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 boop, there was a card. That's how you know it's meant to be, by the way. When you do card pulls, you don't have to get like technical, okay? Just use your intuition. If you want to put them in a mess in a pile and boop, the card pops out, that's meant for you, okay? So three cards pop out. I get the cards. <laughs> Guess what the third card was? The freaking tower. And I was like, oh, no, we are not. <laughs> we are not closing this reading with this card. No, we are not. We need more answers. So I shuffle, 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 and lo and behold, bloop, we finally get that fourth card out. So I've already given you two of the four cards tonight. 
Let's go in order and talk about all four. Queen of Pentacles for our first card. I'm going to make sure all the people in my Facebook world see the video too. Queen of Pentacles. There she is. There she is over on Instagram. All right. The Queen of Pentacles represents ruling our life with sovereignty, knowing that our worthiness comes from inside, knowing that all of our creative potential comes from inside, knowing that we're abundant. We hold an attitude of gratitude and that keeps us in an abundant life, an abundant mindset. But this is the past card. This is the past, okay? So this represents a reminder to us that we still have the capacity to do this now. We still have the ability to rule our life with ease, with joy. We are worthy of having whatever we desire. Notice this orange on the queen, sacral chakra, worthiness. Notice the yellow on the card surrounding her, solar plexus, those light codes amplified, joyful energy, positivity, growth, abundance, money, 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 the wealth bringer, okay? This is the wealth bringer. This is Danisha Nakshatra. By the way, those eight Vazus, those eight gods of the elements of earth, they were born out of the river Ganges, the waters of life. Women particularly have waters of life, right? Queen of Pentacles is embracing her creative magic and trusting that she can take whatever is around her, rock, stick, and blood, and make magic with it. Throw in the earth in there. <laughs> now, the present card I pulled was another pentacle card. We're going two steps back to the page of pentacles. Okay, bring that up to Facebook, over here on Instagram. The page of pentacles is a different vibe. Page of pentacles is still learning how to embrace their abundance. They're still learning to be grateful. They're still learning how to cultivate their magic and use the five elements for alchemy. Notice that we're pulling this in the present. And we've probably now reflected during this time of August 2022 on the past two years that we've navigated. Okay, so we're going two steps back two years ago or two years ago. We were the queen of our life. Maybe not so much now. What the hell is going on? on this planet, in our life, <laughs> right? We're probably all feeling that a little bit if we're on this transmission, like, what is going on? Um, this is a lesson to learn, right? We are giving an opportunity right now to still find abundance, to still embrace that we are wealthy, to still hold that attitude of gratitude. And remember that we're halfway through the lunar year. This is our last time to plant seeds of intention, Whatever we plant right now will reflect over the next six months. It's what we will harvest or lose in our crops and what won't come to fruition. So the Page of Pentacles arrives in our reading right now to say, hey, do the work now. Embrace that positive attitude, that grateful attitude, so that you have a grateful rest of the lunar year. Oh, let's talk about the tower. Tower always gets bad vibe, right? But I think we already touched base on this with, with our interpretation of the Vedic astrology, okay? This is divine timing. Notice that it's always kind of chaotic on the car. We've got lightning striking a tower. The castle tower is on fire. There's a man and woman falling down on each side of it. This is divine timing. This is natural disaster. This is all of that flooding going on on the planet right now during the Lion's Gate portal. And it's also a reminder that this moon is aligned in Saturn and squaring off with Rahu and Ketu. Rahu is aligning with Uranus on top of that. So we've got to shake up on the planet, shake up on the collective, shake up in our own lives. It's divine timing. It's out of our control. It's a natural way to find balance again. Or maybe it's the universe giving you that little nudge for you to get back onto your one true path. Anytime we're pulling the tower card, it's a reminder that something is going to happen. It's out of your control, but you can still choose how you behave on it, with it, and you can still end up on your one true path. Trust that it's happening to put you back where you need to be. Now, we needed a bonus message, right? Because that was our future card. Tower. <laughs> and again, I did this. 
to shuffle. Now, the Tower card, I think, came in one of our previous readings. It might have even been the last one. I can't remember. But yes, chaotic shuffle. The Tower pops out. Well, so did the Chariot. And I love the Chariot because it's kind of like the Tower card. We have this light and dark horse. Okay? And the Knight's riding his Chariot. But these are two paths, two choices. Okay? First, we have the horses. We have the light path and the dark path. We can choose to go down the lighter path that's already illuminated, that's what's familiar. We can choose to go down the dark path, the uncertain, the unknown, the deep layers, the shadow work. Our next evolution that we're kind of unsure about how to get there or how it's going to happen, but we know it's like something we need to do. Okay? There's the two options. Now we also have this gentleman driving the chariot. And he can choose to drive it. He can choose to take the reins, to take back his power, and choose what path he goes on. Or he can not. He can be like, I don't want to, I don't want to choose. I don't want to deal with this right now. I want to numb out, whatever it may be. But the, the universe, the universe is going to take you down a path, okay? So the horses are going to go down a path one way or another. It's probably going to be the path that you're more familiar with that's illuminated which means that you're going to continue having the same karmic lessons over and over again. There's nothing wrong with that. Maybe that's where you're comfortable and you want to stay and continue to learn. Or maybe the universe goes, no, it's time. It's time for you to move on. It's time for you to take a new journey and it takes you down the other path, even when you let go of the reins, okay? So again, this is a card of divine nature, divine timing, expecting the unexpected, but also remembering that you can choose or choose not to choose. And no choice is right or wrong. The choice is yours. This is karma. This is Saturn. This is Rahu and Ketu. Learning from our past and moving into our next evolution in the future. This is the bonus message. Hmm. That is what I have for you tonight. We didn't do any specific practice tonight. I mentioned that I'm going to pull cards for you. So if you want a card pulled under this Aquarian full moon energy, put it in the comments right now because I'm going to be pulling the cards tomorrow. They're the Tarot of the Divine. They're at my studio, but I'll be at the studio early tomorrow morning. I'm going to pull the cards and I'm going to come back into these comments on these videos and let you know what those cards were. Lisa said, no, the tower. Tower doesn't have to be a good or a bad thing. It's all about our perspective. It's all about how we embrace it, right? Okay. What else do I need to say? There was something else. In true Aquarius full moon fashion, I can't focus and all my thoughts are going around everywhere. Okay, so we've got our tarot cards. We did that. We talked about pulling cards. Oh, I just got to remember to release the guides and guardians because Lord knows I forget many times live and I have to do it later or I don't do it later. So I will do that. Before I do that, I want to bring up a couple of things. Number one, we now do these full moon circles and new moon circles on Instagram and Facebook. So if you have friends that are not on one, but they're on the other, let them know that I'm on both right now. Our next new moon circle, our next virtual moon circle honoring the new moon in Virgo, that's going to be on August 27th. That's a Saturday. That's going to be at 8 p.m. Central Time on the Vina Lene Facebook and Instagram pages. So if you just log on, I'll be there live streaming. That's all you have to do to tune in. Also, if you um, tune into all of my stuff on my website, I write about the moon, I write about the astrological season, I write about the tarot cards that I pull. So if you want to go read what um, I have to write, it's sometimes a little bit different than what I say live. So you can go a little bit deeper there. You can also click on my live events on my website and that will tell you all of my upcoming stuff, my moon circles, anything else virtual um, or anything else at my studio or in the... Uh, real world, usually here in Southeast Iowa. Um, also, speaking of my YouTube channel, I have 
compiled all of my stuff into one channel. I'm now only using the Mother Moon Yoga channel because with my Mother Moon Yoga studio, I teach yoga with an astrological influence. So I decided it was only appropriate I start putting those moon circles on there as well. Plus, I close my studio during full moon and new moon days. So it's a way for you to still connect and tune into me even when my studio's closed and just kind of tune into me from a different perspective and a different vibe. So you can um, also check out a lot of my content on the Mother Moon Yoga YouTube channel. Just search Mother Moon Yoga. And all of the recordings of my moon circles and my tarot readings are there as well from these moon circles, the tarot readings, and all of them from the past like few years. So I moved everything over. You can go and view all of it as well. The moon is fire right now. I haven't even looked at it because I've been here with you. I'm going to go gaze at it and soak it all in and do a little moon bathing here in just a few minutes when I get off of here with you. I also don't want my battery to die here on the Facebook webcam camera thing as well. Ashley says that, oh, Ashley, I love you too. And Ashley said she values my light. Thank you so much. I value you, sister. She, she feels inspired, lighter, better, and more clarity. I'm so glad that you tuned into the circle, sister. I knew it would serve you. It'd be a little bit of medicine for you. Okay, another announcement I already mentioned at the beginning of this transmission. If you haven't tuned into my Manifestation Masterclass, you can get all of the recordings right now for free. I'll be sending them out tomorrow. VinaLene.com slash Manifesting Masterclass will get you tuned into that content for free. And then I have one you. Okay, we're going to do it really, really fast. Final big, big announcement. Big, big announcement. I always do this during the Lionsgate portal, as in always. I've been doing it for two years now. It is a tradition now for me to open up enrollment to conscious creatress during the Lionsgate portal. Because I'm a Leo rising and I like, to, I like to let it all out during the Leo season, during the Lionsgate portal. My signature 16-week online manifestation program is open for enrollment with early bird pricing and a new both six month and 12 month payment option. So you can pay in full and you can save a little bit, but you also have the option for a six month and 12 month payment plan now per the request of many people from the last time I had enrollment open. They said, please make it more affordable with a payment plan. And I said, I got you sisters. So if you want to tune in to see what that program is all about, it's a place where I hold a container specifically for women to work on manifestation with the moon, with their chakras, doing deep shadow work and connecting specifically only to feminine energy and the feminine experience, you can go to venalinae.com slash CC, as in conscious creatress. You can read all about that program. You can see the pricing options. You can see everything that the program has. 16-week program where you work on your four main chakras every month. You do shadow work. You heal ancestral karma. You do mother wounds, father wounds, sibling wounds. You learn about the moon the four phases of the moon, the four feminine archetypes. You work with other sisters that are also doing the work in an online community that's not on Facebook or social media. It's on my website, Private Sisterhood of all the women that have done the work, gone through the program, or are doing it right now. And you also have the option to work with me privately along the way in premium enrollment, where I have eight free private sessions, one-on-one, -on -one, that we do either on the phone, here virtually, or in person, also to help you stay on track and work towards your goals. So that one is just for the ladies. I just wanted to put that out there at the end of the transmission. The early bird pricing is available until August 22nd, until we shift the energy into Virgo season. And then registration will stay open, but the pricing is going to go up. So if you want to take advantage of the lowest pricing possible, because pricing goes up every time I open enrollment, take advantage of early bird pricing now or before August 22nd. So vinalinae.com slash cc. You can read all about Conscious Creatress, my signature program. It's my dream. It's my pride and joy. It's my digital little content baby. I have so much passion and love for what I created out of that and the women that have moved through the container and also created out of it as well. I know that several of you are on the transmission tonight that are in that sisterhood of conscious creation that have navigated the program. So thanks for being on here, sisters, and tuning in. 
Okay, that's what I have for you. I want to get over this before anything dies and I get all my recordings. So thank you so much for being here. Recordings will be available tomorrow on YouTube and on my website. Until we meet again for that new virtual moon celebrating, uh, moon circle celebrating the new moon in Virgo. May we all be happy. May we all be healthy. May we all feel safe. May we all feel loved. And with that, I release the guides and guardians of all five directions on hyperspeed tonight to save battery time. Thank you, guides and guardians of the five elements for also being in our circle tonight. Thank you to all of you, moon brothers and sisters, for being on the circle tonight. May we all be blessed and know that wealth is right here as the lights flash and confirm it and affirm it and say it is so, it is so, it is so. Love you all. Mm. Blessed be. Namaste. I hope today's message served you. If you enjoy the Follow Your Path podcast, I would love for you to leave a review. As a thank you, every month I do a drawing from the reviews and I choose one person to win a free one hour, one-on-one soul coaching session with me. This can be done in person or online depending on where you are. I also feature reviews on my website and social media. So thank you for the feedback and the testimonials. It truly is an honor to be here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I look forward to meeting with you again in the next episode.